Hey guys, Jarek here. Believe it or not, I have some Modern Warfare 3 gameplay for you. Don't get your hopes up, or more likely than not, don't get your hopes down in this case. This is the only game of Modern Warfare 3 I have recorded, and will probably be the very last game of Modern Warfare 3 uploaded to this channel. Why was I playing Modern Warfare 3? Well, I've been going through the older Call of Duty games and making gun showcases for it. Modern Warfare 3 is on that list, so I reinstalled it just to see how, what level I was. And to my surprise, I put 50 hours into this game, which I didn't think I'd do because I didn't really like it that much. And I was level 78, which is just two levels away from being max level. I only didn't have the RPG unlocked. So I jumped into a few games, leveled a little bit, and within the process of doing this and getting everything unlocked, I had a pretty good game on Terminal. It wasn't amazing, it was good enough to upload. I didn't even get my highest kill streak, but for variety's sake, I hope you will enjoy some Modern Warfare 3. Or probably will just get reminded as to why you don't like it, but. Within the last week, I have been doing this for the other Call of Duty games. I've done this for World of War as well. I played Call of Duty 4, World of War, Modern Warfare 2, and Modern Warfare 3 within the last week. I played so much Black Ops 1 and 2 that that's always fresh in my mind. In my opinion about some of the things in these games has changed a little bit, but for the most part, they've stayed the same. Call of Duty 4... Man, people look at that game with 4-inch thick rose-tinted goggles. It's just such a nostalgia-based game for people. They seem to think that it's it's flawless, it can't do anything wrong. And don't get me wrong, it's, it's not a bad game, it's still a fun game. But it's definitely not perfect. People seem to magically forget that it brought in things like Martyrdome and Juggernaut and Stopping Power, or that the M16 or the AK-47 are the only guns you should ever use, or God forbid the Desert Eagle for the pistol, because why would you use anything else? Balance was definitely not its strong suit. But there's one of two things you need to do in order to be successful. Either you need to be unique and innovative and do something that no one's ever done before, and Call of Duty 4 definitely did this, or you need to do what someone else has done but do it better, and in my opinion this is what Treyarch does, and this is why I prefer Black Ops 1 and 2. So as far as Call of Duty 4 goes, I can go into it and play it and enjoy it, but it's never really my thing, I'm more indifferent about it than anything else. I get driven crazy by some of the stuff in that game, but it doesn't kill me like it does with Modern Warfare 2. Modern Warfare 2... People love that game, but I have never liked it. I have always despised it, and playing through it again just reminded me as to why. Nothing but noob tubes. Like, I've talked about this before, but Infinity Ward and Treyarch have very, very different ideologies when it comes to making a game. Infinity Ward just wants to make a fun game, quote unquote fun, whereas Treyarch makes to want, wants to make a balanced game that you can take seriously in a competitive environment. Infinity Ward obviously does not look for this. <laughs> Their games are not what I would call competitive, as all balance goes completely out the window, and things like one-man army come, become a problem, and they don't really patch their game, so... If you like goofy explosions everywhere, all over the place, and don't want to take the game seriously, then yeah, you're probably gonna like Infinity Ward Call of Duty, but if you're like me and you're really competitive, you're probably not going to. And that's why I didn't like Modern Warfare 2 at all. As far as Modern Warfare 3 goes, Something really weird happened that I didn't expect to happen. I actually found myself enjoying Modern Warfare 3 more than Modern Warfare 2. I'm willing to bet the sole reason for this is just because I didn't get killed constantly by nothing but freaking noob tubes all the damn time. Uh, but yeah, that actually surprised me. Modern Warfare 3 is definitely not a polished game in comparison. Modern Warfare 2 definitely looks and plays smoother. But things are a little bit more balanced in Modern Warfare 3. Uh, granted, not everything is balanced at all. This game is still over the top, ridiculous, crazy, and Infinity Ward doesn't care about balance. I mean, hell, I'm using the MP7 in this game. This is blatantly the best SMG in the game. So yeah, as far as that goes, I was surprised that I actually was liking Modern Warfare 3 more than Modern Warfare 2. I really didn't expect to see that happen, but I did. And I mentioned I went back and played World at War as well. Now, I've always been more indifferent about World at War. I, I mean, I liked it. I didn't hate it. But, you know, I was never really big on it. Going back and playing it, I kind of question why. It, it's still a fun game to me. Balance doesn't seem to be a huge problem. The game seems to be fairly polished. But what I do know, and this is, I mean, the main reason everyone disliked World at War instantly was just because they went back to World War II and people were so sick of World War II at the time that game was released. They were super excited about Modern Warfare and then you go back to World War II and everyone instantly dislikes you. Really, it's not World War II that's the problem, though. The problem was that every World War II game ended up being the same, marching the... 
It's just D-Day over and over. It, pretty much every single World War II game was had the same levels. They went off the same blueprint, and they were just so repetitive. So it wasn't that it was in that era, it was just people were so sick of playing the same game. World of War also has this really weird thing. This is something I only recently noticed while going back and playing it. It's like an odd mix of like Call of Duty 2 and Call of Duty 4. It doesn't feel like a AAA game as far as animations go for reloading on all of this stuff. The animations are actually kind of bad looking. Uh, and the textures are muddy. It definitely did not have the production value that Call of Duty 4 did. It was like Black Ops 1 was the first game where Activision really threw a lot of money at them to make this game. Uh, and I think it paid off. I think it showed. Black Ops 1 was a really fun game. In my opinion, it is, aside from Black Ops 2, probably the best in the entire franchise. And I, I know people may lynch me for it, but I've always preferred Treyarch Call of Duty. But as far as World, World at War goes, the gameplay, to me, is still Treyarch. It's, it's fun. Uh, it's enjoyable. I still don't think it's as good as Black Ops 1 and 2, but... Yeah, I don't know why I was so indifferent about that game. I remember not caring for it or wanting to play it, but I found myself enjoying it. Now as far as, as I said, I've been doing weapon showcases and just for warning, I do have a weapon showcase recorded for both World at War and Model for 3. I've yet to edit them and they will be uploaded within the next few days. But, you know, it gets me onto the topic of weapon unlocks and weapon unlocks are just so silly when it comes to shooters. They're so unnecessary. It drives me crazy, but why do they exist is the question and the reason they exist isn't for people like me see for me when I get good at a game or when I play a game the payoff and reward is me being consistently the best person in the lobby me consistently winning to me that's fun but for other people their payoff for playing the game is unlocking stuff and these are the type of people that wouldn't keep playing the game without that motivation, without that end goal of unlocking something. So the unlocks aren't there for the dedicated people that want to get good at the game. The unlocks are there for the people that are... the casual people that will sit on the couch for a weekend and play a little bit. They're not for me. Which, as far as a developer and a publisher goes, you want that in your game. It drives me crazy. I hate unlocks. If I could have every single shooter and just everything unlocked by default, I would love it to be that way. Because they shouldn't really, there's no reason for them to ex exist when it comes to a shooter like Modern Warfare. If everything's balanced perfectly fine, then unlocking something new just means you've got another gun. It doesn't mean you've got something better. So that's why it bothers me. Anyway, there's been some Modern Warfare 3 gameplay. Hope you guys have enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys for the weapon showcases.